Greetings from the Guild Gamers. I'm Guildmaster Jason. Welcome to Throwback Thursday. For those of you who don't know, Throwback Thursday is when I, Guildmaster Jason, bring you guys stories from whatever role-playing games we might have stories from. Things that might make you laugh, things that might make you say, hey, that's a cool story. Sometimes these stories are stories from campaigns that I've run, sometimes they're stories from campaigns that I've played in, sometimes they're stories from people that I barely know. At any rate, the topic of today's Throwback Thursday is a campaign that I ran, and it's actually the finale of the campaign that I ran. So you're welcome. Now this wasn't a very long-running campaign per se, it went about uh, level 4 or 5. Most of the story centered around this small town that, to be honest, I can't entirely remember the name of, so we're gonna call it... Ulandia. No, that sounds too fancy. It was a small town. It was... Delron. It was the town of Delron. That might actually be right. Probably not. I don't know. At any rate, the town of Delron was sort of a safe haven for half-elves. Most of the population here was, in fact, half-elf. It was a place where half-elves could feel like they truly belonged. Now, the only problem is this town dealt with frequent invasions from orcs. They had a town guard, but it was nothing close to a standing militia, so there wasn't much they could really do about it. Eventually it just got to the point where they expected these orcs to come, so they left all kinds of loot outside for them to take while they stayed inside and locked their doors, and for the most part there generally weren't that many casualties. They just had to restock everything in the town after these invasions happened. So as the adventurers in this campaign come along this town, they're actually preparing for the next upcoming orc invasion. Now, our adventurers didn't really understand this give-and-take relationship that this town had going on with the orcs. They felt like the town needed to stand up and defend itself against these orcs and do something about the problem. To make a long story short and cut to the good part of the story, they used a little bit of investigation compared with some illusion magic to find out what these orcs were really up to. As it turned out, this particular upcoming invasion wasn't like the rest. The orcs weren't just coming to raid supplies and leave. This was actually the beginning of a huge siege that was going on across the overarching region. The orcs planned to use this city as sort of a home base. As such, they were actually planning on laying siege to it and remaining there this time. After learning this, the players traveled back to the town and informed the town elders of what was going on and what the orcs were planning. With a little persuasion, the town elders were finally swayed to form sort of a standing army to fight against the orcs. As the party was the motivating force for this standing army, they allowed the party to act as standing generals in that army, in addition to their own head of town guard. Now at this point, let's take a look at the party that we had here. It consisted of three players. One was a dragonborn paladin. The dragonborn paladin was essentially put in command of all the civilians in the town that were ready and able to fight and defend their town. Now this town did have some prisoners and it actually had a wall around the town that actually served as its prison. The party was actually able to convince the town elders to use these prisoners. Should the prisoners be willing to fight in the battle, if they survived, they would be freed. As sort of the rougher member of the party, the half orc ranger was put in charge of commanding this force. Oh, did I not mention one of the party members was actually a half orc? Yeah, that's a thing. Now, because this was a town of half-elves, there was a decent amount of mages here. The drow warlock in the party was actually put in charge of commanding all the mages. So through a series of messengers and scouts, they figured out when the orcs approximately would be there, and on the day of the invasion, they all positioned their men where they felt they were most needed. The half-orc and his squad of criminals kind of spread out into the wilderness around the city as sort of a first line of defense. He was hoping that they'd be able to get the drop on the orcs by attacking them far out from the town before they were actually prepared for a battle. However, this was an invasion of orcs, and as we all know, orcs are sort of always prepared for battle. Unfortunately, they did manage to make it past this first line of defense and further towards the city. Meanwhile, the half-orc ranger commanding these forces just kind of pressed inwards behind them, pursuing them and continuing to, to attack them and trying to diminish their forces. Essentially, the Drow Warlock just gathered all of the mages in the town on the top of the tallest tower in the town. And I basically allowed them to say that they just converged all of their arcane energy together to cast powerful beams of arcane energy down into the hordes of the orcs. I was running a massive combat system here, so basically in each round they were able to unleash one of these powerful beams. However, while standing on top of this tower, the Drow Warlock looked down at the battlefield and saw that the Half-Orc Ranger was in trouble. Now this was kind of a climactic moment, because this party wasn't exactly your stereotypical adventuring party. 
It was a paladin and a half work and a drow, a drow warlock at that. So you can imagine about how well they got along. Until this point, they didn't really seem to even like each other that much. But suddenly when this drow warlock saw this half-orc ranger about to fall in combat, he climbed down from his fellow mages and joined the fray. At this time, the half-orc ranger was locked in combat with an orog, essentially an orc spellcaster. The orog finally smashed the half-orc ranger to the ground. Being a half-orc, he quickly came back up at one hit point and was immediately smashed to the ground again. Watching this happen, the drow warlock then unleashed a powerful witch bolt which finished off the Orog, who was a very powerful and pivotal general in the Orc's forces. Unfortunately, being a warlock, the center of a big battle isn't the best place for him, and he was soon killed afterwards. Now, the head of town guards had actually positioned his men in a perimeter outside of the wall in hopes of preventing the Orc horde from ever actually piercing the wall. Unfortunately, that didn't work. The town guards fell, and soon the Orcs were inside the walls. The only remaining line of defense for the city was the Dragonborn Paladin and his civilian fighters. Luckily, all of the other waves of defense had weighed the orcs down enough that they were actually able to pull out a victory. So with that, the campaign came to a very bittersweet finale. Essentially, the town was saved, but two of the three players had died. Well, okay, their characters died. The players are still alive, guys. They're fine. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this week's Throwback Thursday. If you have any questions about this story, feel free to drop a comment. If you have a story you'd like us to talk about next Thursday, be sure to send us a message. The best way to get a hold of us is through our Facebook page. Until next time, game on, gamers.